Hi, I'm Bob Maselli. I'm a Marine Master Gardener, and I'm here to give you some hints on how you might be able to bring birds to your backyard. So what, what you're trying to do in order to bring the birds into your backyard is to provide a habitat for them, a familiar habitat. And in order to do that, you need to provide water, food, and shelter or cover. Okay, so um, why would you want to build a bird habitat um, and feed the birds or take care of them? Well, the reason is that over the last 20 or 30 years, uh, almost half of the bird populations in North America have gone down by 50 or more percent. And so by building habitats in our homes, um, we can give the birds that are left a chance to live and to procreate. In this Mediterranean dry climate, particularly during the summer, water is one of the main attractants that will bring birds in. In particular, the sound of moving water, whether drip or flow. Birds use water for drinking and for bathing and sometimes even for fun. So bird baths like this are an easy and convenient way to provide water in the great bird habitat that you're building in the backyard. And you can buy bird baths in all kinds of types and sizes. Big ones, little ones, deep ones, shallow ones. Um, these are of a size that appeals to most of the birds uh, that exist here in Marin County. Um, they're not too deep. Um, you can put a rock in it so that the, even the small birds like goldfinches will feel comfortable in using this uh, bath. And they're not terribly expensive. This one is a little bit fancy. Um, the one that you've seen before is nothing more than a simple saucer in a, in a grid, and it can be bought anywhere for, you know, a few dollars. It's important when you provide water to keep it clean because it can carry contaminants or um, bacteria that will make the birds sick or even cause them to die. It all begins with the plants because that's where they may get food uh, and that's where they may get the shelter uh, or cover that they need to escape from dangers and to bring up their young. The oak trees uh, that are a significant part of the Marin uh, landscape, they are critical because they provide not only food for the birds, something like 24 species of birds. Um, in, just in North Marin, use the oaks as nesting material. If they can't have babies, well, that's one of the reasons why they're gonna lose the population. Shrubs are really great because they tend to be thickets that provide protection. And also there are birds that will only build in shrubs. Uh, and ground covers for ground nesting birds like um, our towhees and quail. About two years ago, there were three families of quail nesting underneath that ground cover and they fledged about 45 little fuzzball babies. If you're, if you're now thinking about, okay, what do I have to do to get the kind of plants in here that I really need? You don't have to tear out your garden. What we'd like you to do is consider adding some California native plants. Why is that? The reason is that those plants and our birds have grown up over a million years together. And that's really important uh, because natives will give them the food they need. The other thing about California native plants 
is that insects recognize them as being beneficial to them. Um, butterflies, for example, lay their eggs only on native plants because their caterpillars will only eat the native plants. And that's important because birds need insects too as part of their diet, even if the adult birds do not eat uh, insects, but eat nothing but seeds. They feed their young insects because that's how they can get them from just popping out of an egg to flying in two to three weeks. When you use California native plants, leave the parts of the plants that birds and the caterpillars will eat. And that tends to be the seed heads, the leaves, and the fruit or the seeds on the plants. So to be successful, don't be so neat. Leave the seed heads, leave the fruit even when it gets shriveled and dried. And particularly, don't use pesticides um, and don't use rodenticides to get rid of the few rodents that may come to your feeders. The owls that hunt them will eat them and they will die as well. Be more natural. So this is how many of us get started in building a bird habitat, by going out and buying a hummingbird feeder and making some syrup, put it in, and lo and behold, the hummingbirds come to visit. First, the Anna's hummingbirds, which live here all year round, and then some of the migrants like Rufus and Allen's hummingbirds. This is a particularly good one to get for two reasons. One, it's not very expensive. The second reason is the hummingbirds know this is a feeder by its shape and color, because so many of us have bought one like this. What's important about this is to keep it clean. In the summertime, the syrup in there can turn into alcohol uh, in two to three days. So in the hot summer, you wanna clean this out every two to three days, easily. Um, in the wintertime, you can let it go for a, a, a week or maybe even more. Um, the second thing is, what goes in it? What goes in it is not red. So don't buy red dye and don't buy syrup that is got red dye in it. Um, this is very simple to make. It's one part of sugar to four parts of boiling water. Um, and that's the simple. Because number one, it's too dilute for bees and wasps to use as nectar. And number two, it's cleaner and it's the right strength for hummingbirds to use. Most people feed seeds to the birds in their bird feeders. Um, and one important thing to realize about seeds is they don't last forever. Uh, the nutritional value of them um, you know, begins to decay almost at a time when they're put in a bag or a box. Um, and so you, the first thing is you want to have a fresh supply of clean seeds that the birds can eat. If you can only buy one type of seed, then what you really want to buy is black oil sunflower. Not only do they have good nutrition, but they're also used by most seed-eating birds uh, except for the birds that you don't want, like house sparrows and uh, starlings, um, because they can't crack the nuts. Okay, so this is a common type of feeder that's used with black oil sunflower, and it's, it's typically used by smaller birds. The birds get at it by standing on these uh, roosts and going in and getting one seed at a time. Here's another form of sunflower seeds. 
um, it's got no shells, so it's easy to clean up because there's nothing to clean up. The birds eat it all. It's the seeds of the sunflower, bits of cracked peanuts, and a little bit of millet, which finches love. And so it's a good uh, either addition or in place of the black oil sunflower. And then there are many birds that like to have a mix of seeds, and so this mix is of black oil and striped sunflower seeds, and it's mixed in with cracked corn and millet that uh, ground-feeding birds like quail uh, really like to eat. But other birds will eat it. It's a good mix to use uh, with them. And then finally, we have here a specialty seed. Now this is called Niger seed. Uh, that's because it's grown in Nigeria. And it is something that finches, gold finches, house finches, pine siskins, and other finches really love. Um, it uses a special feeder and it will bring in the finches and they will spend hours eating it, each little seed. So that's a very handy thing to have because here in Marin County, we have a lot of finches. Some of the less expensive mixes of seeds that you can buy in supermarkets or hardware stores and places like that really don't have a lot of nutritional value. Yes, they do have some of these sunflower seeds, but they also have um, uh, grains that our birds here in the U.S. don't eat. Um, and so you're wasting half of it and making a mess under your feeder that can attract rodents. So you want to uh, buy in a place where you, they have a good turnover of foods because that means you'll be buying fresh foods. And you probably will end up paying a little more for a bag or a box of good clean seed. But in the long run, that's actually gonna save you money because you won't be throwing away half the seed or raking it up from underneath the bird feeders where the birds have tossed it away because they don't want to eat it.